Hey everyone, what's up? It's Dr. Charlie Johnson, a physical therapist here. And today I wanted to share with you a video I actually created uh, for members inside my private coaching program called uh, the Glute Relief Accelerator Program, where I teach people uh, suffering from piriformis syndrome, as well as sciatica, basically a pain in the butt, uh, how to reduce their symptoms and gain back control uh, of their life. So uh, in this video, I want to answer a question that I get uh, all the time. It always comes up on coaching calls, and it's this. Uh, Dr. Charlie, how do I know uh, which activities or things are triggering or aggravating my problem. So uh, to go a step further, this video will also address something that so many people, so probably yourself, if you're dealing with one of these problems, um, have probably experienced, right? Or said out loud to themselves. And it sounds something like this. Hey, Dr. Charlie, I went for a walk, or you could insert anything, a swim. I was gardening. I was doing house chores. I was biking, whatever. And I was fine while doing it. But a few hours later, I paid for it and I was in so much pain. What the heck happened? So if you've ever experienced this and been frustrated about what's going on and uh, want to know how you can get to the bottom of things so that you can better understand uh, what's causing your issue so you can catch it early, uh, then be sure to watch the end because I'm going to share with you the exact steps uh, that I use with my private clients to help them figure it out. Uh, for anybody who's watching uh, my other content or who has looked at my other content, checked it out. Uh, you probably noticed that I love stories an analogy. So I'm going to use a story about a bank robbery uh, to get my point across and help you grasp the concepts uh, if you are in pain and want to learn more. And in case you're new to my channel, hi everyone, my name is Dr. Charlie Johnson. I am a doctor of physical therapy and an orthopedic board specialist, and I help people with back, butt, and sciatica pains heal naturally by teaching them how to use movement as medicine. So if you'd like to learn how to fix yourself so you can avoid pills, shots, surgery, and stop relying on other people to fix you, then I want you to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications so that you get alerted when I post content and new videos every single uh, week. Also, if you're watching this video uh, and you're in the early phase of the process and or you've tried lots of different things, seen lots of different people, and you're still not sure what the heck is causing your pain in the butt, then I want you to go ahead and download uh, my free DIY diagnostic guide, which literally is a mapping of all the algorithms in my brain so that you can best determine the most likely source of your symptoms without needing a specialist, without needing x-rays, MRIs, and or other painful tests. So uh, hopefully you enjoy this video. Uh, check it out. All right, everyone, this is Dr. Charlie. Want to shoot another video. Super excited. We'll call this story like the story of the two bank robbers and $100,000 and or like two men in a ski mask a butter knife and hundred thousand dollars. I don't know, whatever it is, whatever the headline is that makes you watch this um, great. Cause it's super important. Man, it's just so frustrating. I just, I do this thing. And then a few hours later, I have like this delayed onset of pain, like what's going on there. And here's my answer. Okay. And I'm going to answer this through a story. The police get a report that the bank, that a bank was robbed. Okay. So the bank started with a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Um, you know, and now it's 2 p.m., right? And the police are called and said, oh my gosh, the bank has been robbed, okay? Now, there were three men who walked into the bar. I'm so confused. <laughs> do you want me to write it down for you? No, do you just want to do it? <laughs> sure. Okay. My wife's going to tell the story. Enter wife. Okay. Here's my story. wife's going to tell the story because I can't figure out, He's getting messed up. I can't figure out the timeline of the story. Okay. <laughs> okay. You have the oh. microphone. Thank you. Yeah. We should definitely keep all of this in. This isn't getting cropped out. It's hilarious. Okay. All right. So here's the story. <laughs> That's too funny. All right. The police officers get a phone call that the bank's been robbed, right? So it's two o'clock in the afternoon. They get this call. Our bank's been robbed. We have a hundred thousand dollars missing. Okay. So the police officers go to the bank and start pulling up the footage. All right. We see two guys in ski masks. They've got the black ski mask with the holes for their eyes. Um, they enter the bank at nine o'clock in the morning. Right. So it's like, all right, we've got our culprits. They're the ones that robbed the bank. They must have the hundred thousand dollars. Well, okay. So if they entered the bank at nine o'clock in the morning, but the money wasn't reported missing until 2 p.m. There's a lot of time in there, right? So a really good investigator is going to say, okay, well, let's look at this gap of time. We can't just blame the two guys in ski masks because that was nine o'clock in the morning and the money wasn't missing until two. Well, so that's what everyone wants to do. <laughs> everyone wants to blame the guys in the ski mask. Super obvious, right? Because they had ski masks on and then there's $100,000 missing. But if they take a closer look, 
at the footage, right? And they actually break it down. Okay, how could Rob- It was maybe the guy with the butter knife. Aha. Okay, so if they start breaking it down, um, hey, do we have any employees on staff who counted the money between 9 a.m. when the ski mask people came and 2 p.m.? Oh, guess what? There was. We have a log. And every day, this employee named Sherry comes in and counts the money that's in the vault. And there was $100,000 still in the vault at 1 o'clock, which means the act had to happen between 1 and 2 p.m. Otherwise, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense that, like, you rob the bank at 9 o'clock, but the money's still there, and then at 1 o'clock it disappears. But the guy in the ski mask were long gone. So you have to go really detailed and I'm going to call Charlie back <laughs> to take a look at what <laughs> how you can identify what here. actually here you go <laughs> very good so you need to be very kind of methodical about going through the process of your own timeline as it relates to your pain so that you can figure out what the heck happened before you just blame the two guys with the ski mask now who are the two guys in the ski mask the two guys in the ski mask in this analogy of pain are well, I went swimming this morning and I guess I just can't swim. Or, you know what, I played pickleball and I was fine when I played pickleball, but three hours later, I couldn't walk. No, maybe yes, but probably no, all right? Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Because number one, it makes you depressed, right? Because then you think, I can't do this thing I want to do. But it's just a quick judgment call that you're making without actually investigating the facts, okay? So basically, if we can draw this out, so this is a timeline of events. We already talked about the whole timeline of events as it relates to the bank robber story. Okay, but let's get right to you. So let's just say that this is what you want to be thinking about and doing for real. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to put a system in place of counting the money on an on a every half an hour basis before the activity after the activity. So that if something ever happens, you can go back and say, was it that or was it not yet? Was it not that? Don't be quick to blame like that activity, if you don't really know, because then I'm going to call you out on it. All right. So what's going to happen is I want you to kind of start with two things. All right. So you're going to wake up in the morning. And if you're wondering like, Hey, I wonder if it's really swimming, let's just say, all right. What you would do is you would start with a number as it relates to maybe your baseline symptoms. And maybe, I don't know, it's a 20 uh, or we'll just say a 30 and then pick a yucky motion. So baseline score, if you have any, right? As far as symptoms, remember zero is yummy. Uh, and then you have low yuckiness, 10, 20, 30, medium, 40, 50, 60, high, 70, 80, 90. Um, and you want to go ahead and just, you know, kind of rate it on a zero to hundred scale. So 30 baseline. And then let's just say that one of your yucky motions is a leg raise, or I don't know, a back bend or whatever it is, something you have, um, that you can kind of put a number to, and you say it's a 30. So I'm starting at a 30 and a 30. And now I go ahead and I do my swimming. So I don't know, we'll put some little waves there. That's your swim. Okay. And then immediately afterwards, you want to go ahead and you want to check yourself. Then you want to say, okay, so now I'm going to retest and my baseline, what am I? Tune in, stop, slice and dice and kind of chunk your day out so that you're not just looking at it two hours later and saying, oh, I'm in so much pain. No, you need to look at the footage. Go back frame by frame and break it down. 30, Hmm. Then you retest your little leg raise. Let's just say that was it. And actually it's a 20 or maybe it's a 20 and a 20. Heck baseline symptoms went down and you moved a little bit better. Now, does that make a whole lot of sense that something that made you feel better in the moment is that which made you all of a sudden, two hours later worse. I don't know. Not usually, right? If a snowball is going like if, if something's going this direction, all of a sudden it just doesn't turn around and go backwards, like for no reason. Okay. So you know, in that case, I have no evidence to believe that swimming or whatever activity it was, um, was the culprit. In fact, it made you better. Now, let's just say, right, this is a true example, actually. Let's just say it then for the next, I don't know, hour, let's just say we reconnect here, okay? And this was in the morning, you went swimming for, I don't know, a couple hours, something like that. And this is the 2 p.m., all right, bank robber story. So it's 2 p.m., so maybe more than an hour, 2 p.m., and this is morning time. After you go swimming, you decide you're going to sit for lunch. That's an activity there. Then you decide you're going to read a book by the pool. Then you decide you're just going to chill and take, I don't know, a little rest on the couch and watch a movie. 
All right. There are three activities there. And then what happens is when we check in, when I get the police report and you're calling me or texting me or reaching out, it's totally fine, by the way, I'm here to help you. But this is what I need you to start bringing solutions to the table with because you are the one in pain and I'm not there to always monitor this. And then you just say, it's not working. That's how it shows up. Or I'm in terrible pain. What do I do? You're too far gone at that point. We needed to do some detective work. We got to go back and look at the footage. Okay. So, so basically I'm getting the police report at 2 PM and you're at this ending point of like a 70 and then the leg raise is like out of control. You're 50. You're saying, help, what motions can I do? Uh, 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 you're too hot. Motions at that point are not going to um, overcome that yuckiness. Probably we could try, but the real solution to that problem is that you need to figure out why the police report was maybe filed in the first place. And, or like, you need to go back frame by frame and figure out like what got you to that point. Okay. How is it that the hundred thousand dollars were just, was just gone. If you don't know, then you're just going to come and bring a problem to the table without a potential solution. All right. So basically you need to go back. I don't even know what the heck you were doing here. I think you were just like eating lunch. Eating lunch. Thank you. Okay. You were eating lunch. So in a perfect world, what you would have done, right. Is you've got 30, 30, 20, 20. You would have said, now I ate lunch. I'm just sitting here. It's not that big of a deal. I can kind of have, you know, a little something in my purse or a sticky note or a napkin or whatever. And you could say, all right, well, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to tune into it. Check in. Ah, now I'm 20 and a 20. This is what the eating lunch will call it. Okay. So you are good. Eating lunch was not the problem. Neither was swimming, by the way. All right. Um, so we'll put that kind of here, eating lunch. Really, I need a smaller font. Boom. Hopefully you can see this. Okay. Now, what do we do next? We were reading a book. We were lying by the pool reading a book. Ah! There we are. Okay. So you're lying by the pool reading the book. Now you're saying after reading that book, you know, you're there for 30 minutes, whatever. Okay. You're saying, ooh, now I'm a 40 and I'm a 40. Now look, it only went from a 20 to a 40 and 20 to 40. That's double the symptoms. That's a significant thing there. All right. So... Was it really the swimming? Was it really the men with the face mask? Or was it the guy with the butter knife? Was it the one-armed man? Okay, that kind of idea, this idea of Clue. You ever play Clue? Everyone who has pain should play Clue because it teaches you to be a detective. Heck, maybe I'll start sending out Clue. Okay, the point is, is that it's this idea that that's when your symptoms start to change. You checked in your baseline, you said it's a 40. Then you went, you did your leg raise. Okay, and you said, ooh, it's a 40. Hmm, now... It could have been, if you go back to morphing motions, right? It could have been, wow, leg raise is my yucky motion. I was sitting by the pool in one of those recliners in a leg raise. Holy smokes. And I just want to say that I'm going to stop myself from swimming because I thought that was it. But in fact, that was it. All right. And then let's say, I don't know, then you go and you, um, what was the third thing? Watch You're watching a movie. Okay. Uh, and then you go watch a movie, right? And I don't know, now it's a 70 and a 50. And that brings you to the police report where you're saying, right. And it's like, things are hot and bothered. There's like something going on and there's emergency. And then I'm getting the call. All right. Um, but so, so the whole point of this, okay, is that something led you to it and you need to go frame by frame, right? You need to study the footage to say, you know, what was it? Was it really that thing? Is it really possible? Something I did, you know, and look, there are some cases where there are probably some exceptions here, okay? But you really want to challenge that notion because it's very easy to blame the thing. But it's harder and people often don't care. This is a super important nugget. People mistake doing nothing for not doing anything. Charlie, I did all this stuff and then I was just chilling by the pool. So you're telling me chilling by the pool, which is a position, couldn't have been more yucky than that what you did? Wrong. Fatal flaw and error in the logic. Okay. It could have absolutely been the position. I wasn't doing anything. Was you sitting in a yucky leg raise or in a yucky figure four or something as you were just chilling with your iPad or your book on your lap in a, you know, a tense position or something that was resulting in increasing your symptoms. How would you know though? You wouldn't know if you just, you know, had we not counted the money, had we not had Sherry or whatever the heck her name was, right? as an employee to have some checks and balances in place at eight, nine, every hour she checks it, right? So we can have a log. And had we not had that little log 
then it's very easy to blame the ski mask folks. Okay. And then there they are, they're screwed because they're in jail for something they didn't do. Don't put swimming, don't put active uh, pickleball, uh, raking, whatever in jail until you have the evidence to do that. Because then again, it makes you depressed. It makes you think like, I can't do that. See, Charlie, it's not working because that thing makes me worse five hours later. No, not necessarily. It is possible, but you need to have some data and you need to bring me some data to prove that that's the thing to blame. All right, so that's all I've got. Obviously, there are strategies there. And number one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to say 40-40. Hmm, what was I doing? Or I'm a 40-40. In the moment, if you catch it quick enough, how can I make it a 30 the baseline symptoms, and then check it a little bit later. Oh, now it's a 30, 20. Started to go down again. You want to find as much yummy as possible. Could I shift like this? Could I shift like that? There is no right or wrong. Could I slouch? Could I sit up tall? Could I chill on my elbow? It could I twist the left? Could I twist the right? There is no such thing as the perfect position posture, remember. But you've got to be in a place and in a position where you start to be your own best advocate because again, I'm not there with you all the time. All right. So hopefully that helps. This is the story of, I don't know, the two bank robbers, which weren't really the bank robbers. It was the guy with the one-armed man and the butter knife. And this is my wife, Heather. And um, that was good stuff. Thanks so much. So that's a wrap. Hopefully you found a lot of value from that sort of funny story, I think, at the end of the day. But um, hopefully it brings some clarity um, for you if you're dealing with a pain uh, in the buttock. Uh, that being said, so many people have come to me and uh, need my help, have tried so many different things, and they've had so many different tests. Uh, they've sort of gone down the healthcare rabbit hole of you know, seeing many different people, getting different opinions and things like that. Uh, and they're just confused about what it is. That's where my DIY diagnostic guide comes in. You can grab that again. Uh, and number two, uh, because when people are in pain, they sort of go insane. It's a very emotional time for a lot of people. They just want to get back to life. So they try you know, to do all kinds of things and they start to you know, push their limits and they do as much as they can, which is awesome. Uh, but it creates a lot of confusion, a lot of muddiness in the water. So the purpose of the story is to help sort of bring you back down to a state of awareness as it relates to your pain uh, and or issue, such that you can get more in touch with what is potentially triggering it or aggravating it. Because one of the first things we need to do when it comes to solving your pain is we need to gather uh, data. We need to have clarity around what those pain triggers are such that we can reduce them. We can start to modify or do things differently or come up with unique outside the box strategies to keep you active, but uh, prevent you from nicking the scab. So again, hope this is helpful. A uh, comment below if you found this useful as you were slicing and dicing the day. Till next week, chat soon.